Hey, how you guys doing? My name is Tom Noski. I'm a filmmaker, photographer, and digital artist based out of Melbourne, Australia. And I've teamed up with Canon Australia to bring you guys some of my favorite tips as far as editing in Premiere, Lightroom, and Photoshop. Things that I use on a daily basis and things that I'm sure you guys will be able to use and hopefully take away to continue creating even whilst we're all stuck in lockdown. Today, I wanna to give you guys four really powerful but simple hacks that I use every single time I edit in Lightroom. They're four lesser known tips that I don't think many people people utilize or utilize to the best of their ability. So we're going to jump in today and I'm going to take you guys through those. The first tip is one that I use every single time I edit to make sure that my work is nice and consistent in the way it looks and feels. It's what I use to make my portfolio so nice and cohesive between multiple projects and make sure that my body of work is all at least looking like it's from the same artist. To do this, all I do is I go into Lightroom and I select the photo that I've just finished editing and I'm ready to export. But before I finish and post it to Instagram, what I like to do is I go and press this little guy down here. What this will do is bring up a second version of your image, but this is not what we're wanting to use. So you want to go down to the, your images and then you're going to select your reference photo. So for me, I set up a grid of photos that I like to reference to for particular images. If I'm working with green and earthy tones, then I'll have a separate reference for that. If I'm working with colder tones, I've got a separate reference for that. If I'm working with my client work, again, I have a separate reference for that. But for this one, we're looking at nice green and earthy tones. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this image into my reference photo. And now from here, what I can do is I can make sure that this image is matching here and I'm creating a really nice cohesive look and feel to my images. If any changes need to be made, now I know that I'm making those changes and it's still going to work with the rest of my work. Tip number two is one that you can use to get more out of the gradient tool. The gradient tool is one of my favorite tools in Lightroom. It's one of the tools that I use to create really nice contrast and add light sources and remove light sources within Lightroom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a really nice powerful light source from the left side of this image here. So what I want to do is I'm going to go and select the gradient tool and then I'm going to pull a nice big sizable circle around this area of the image. Let's say about there is perfect. Once I've got a position that I'm happy with, I want to invert the mask and then I want to draw the feather out to 100%. Now you could finish here, but the issue with this is light doesn't behave flat in real life. There's no light in real life that's going to behave like a flat gradient. So what we want to do is we want to mask this gradient around the environment that it's sitting in. So to do this, all you need to do is go over here to range mask, and then you got to go to luminance. And from here, what you can do is you can check this little box here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to drag from the left hand side or the shadow side until you begin to get rid of some of the shadows in that mask. Let's go to about 20 to 30%. So go to about there. Let's bring the smoothness up to 55. And then once we have that, you'll notice that it's removed a lot of these houses, a few of these trees, and a few of the spots in this gradient that we don't want to flatten completely. Once we're happy with that, we can remove the show luminance mask. We can go over here and we can start to add our light source like so. I like to add a little bit of dehaze, a little bit of warmth, and then a little bit of saturation. And boom, suddenly you've got yourself a nice, realistic light source that's behaving the way that real light would in real life. Tip number three is the auto mask button in the brush tool. So have you ever been using the brush tool in Lightroom and you're using a trackpad and it just makes it super difficult to create really nice refined edges? Well, there's a super easy way to do this. All you're gonna do is you're gonna go over to the brush tool over here. You're gonna make sure that you've got a nice sizable feathered brush. Let's actually bring this down to about 60% and then dragging over these mountains is I want to create a really nice selection of these mountains so I can make them a little bit darker and make them pop a bit more. So if I don't have auto mask turned on, if I go over to the side here, it's going to be really difficult and tedious to create a really nice selection of these mountains. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to select auto mask. Now with this selected, I can go ahead and I can paint over here on the mountains and it's going to detect the edges of those mountains automatically. I don't need to go in and refine those edges myself. All I need to do is paint around the edge and it's going to automatically detect where those mountains start and where they end. It's a really, really good technique that you can use and a really powerful tool that you can use to say, select a person, select a building, make random selections within Lightroom and know that you're not having to tediously select particular areas and really take your time. 
If you're in a rush, if you're editing things quickly, this is the tool for you. The next tip is using the color picker on the hue, saturation, and luminance sliders. This is one that I use all the time to edit when I'm in a little bit of a rush or when I can't really figure out what colors are influencing what and I don't want to play around with sliders. Rather than having to say if I wanted to make these greens a little bit more rich than they are at the moment. They're looking a little bit dull at the moment. I want to make them pop and look like they're actually green. So rather than going over here and playing with the yellow slider and maybe figuring out if that's doing the trick or I can go over here and play with the green slider and one by one figuring out what works and what doesn't, what I can do is I can hit this little guy over here and then I can drag that over on top of the greens and then just by clicking and dragging up to cool them down and dragging down to warm them up, I can change those colors and you'll notice that those sliders are automatically shifting from side to side depending on what I'm wanting to change. This is a really powerful tool that you can start to use within Lightroom to really make some quick adjustments and just teach yourself bit by bit what you need to do to change certain colors. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you took something away from it. And if not, at the very least, I hope it inspired you to start creating again and utilizing this time that we have in lockdown just a little bit better than you already are. Once again, thank you very much to Canon Australia for having me on. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.